Okay, good afternoon. Uh, so we have uh, resumed back today uh, this lecture um, uh, from morning lecture where we have stopped. Right. So in the morning lecture, we just have looked at the simplest central impact of two colliding vehicle. Uh, it is called the simplest because it is direct central impact. So you are very well know what do you mean by central impact or non central impact. And now in central impact, we look at uh, two classes. One is direct central impact, what we have seen in the morning. So there are two unknowns that is we are interested in finding out uh, in uh, direct central impact collision problem. What are those two unknowns? You know that uh, two vehicles collision, you want to uh, model uh, analytically. Uh, the two vehicle can collide head on head or one vehicle uh, driven and the other vehicle uh, hitting from the rear or it can also be a special case like uh, uh, full frontal barrier impact test. And uh, uh, because of clarity of uh, point mass mechanics that is particle ideology mechanics as we are more interested in only translational effect the geometry of the vehicle can be neglected and we can take the vehicle to be as a point mass and that's what is what we were looking at uh, in our previous lecture. So uh, today's particular period, this period, I'm going to teach you uh, oblique central impact. Right. So let me just share uh, uh, my uh, presentation. And also morning, we just ended with looking at uh, two important other form of Newton's second uh, law. One is a principle of impulse and momentum. We have very much used that to find out uh, uh, during direct central impact what is the velocities of colliding particle after the impact so that you would make an assessment of what is the energy loss and so on. So to find out the two unknowns uh, because they are along the line of impact only we require only two equations and one equation we got it through applying principle of impulse and momentum and the second equation we have got it through understanding the physical phenomena that takes place during the collision event in two phases called deformation phase and restitution phase and there we define what is coefficient of restitution. So the definition helps us to get a second uh, scalar equation and with the two equation one can make a first assessment of what is the relative velocity after the collision. So the relative velocity after the collision is an important information in a collision test or in collision environment that to make what is that crash impulse that is getting into an occupant uh, and that's going to further cause the severe kinematics to the occupants present. So if the energy uh, as properly handled by passive safety restraint system, we could uh, improve the crash worthiness of vehicle. So this is what is the basic fundamental in background that we have understood in direct central impact and to have two analytical equation, simultaneous equation to solve, very simple. <clears throat> and today's class, I'm going to explain you an oblique central impact, right? So let's start with that. So hope you are able to see this screen. And uh, we just ended morning lecture looking at uh, Newton's other form. Uh, one is uh, uh, well known, uh, this, this equation. So this equation is what is called the principle of impulse and momentum equation. And you see also we have an another principle called principle of our work and energy principle, a principle of work and energy. So that you get it from another definition of acceleration in terms of secondary relationship. So here you don't see an explicit appearance of time derivative, rather you have gradient of velocity. So dv by dx is velocity gradient multiplied by velocity of the particle would give you acceleration. So if you take this 
into Newton second law, you would end up with another form of Newton's law called the work and energy principle. So these are the two principles are quite useful principle in crash evaluation procedure, right? So this is what we just have stopped in the morning lecture. And let's continue with the today's lecture again in central impact with the lecture points uh, for uh, previous and uh, today's lecture are the following which you could see in this slide and I'm going to continue with this. What is that title of uh, this lecture is oblique. Central. Impact. Oblique central impact. So the word itself says, uh, uh, how can you define that? So when you say central impact, what is to come in your mind is uh, it is uh, point mass point point mass assumption or particle assumption uh, approach. So you have your colliding vehicle represented by point mass, and these spheres are representing them. You can assume. And you know that uh, these two spheres, importantly, uh, they are smooth, frictionless spheres. That is an important assumption that we make. Why is it? Because you know exchange of forces when there are contact between two moving particles would always through normal alone if the contact surfaces are smooth and free, smooth surfaces. If they are not smooth surfaces, they would act at an angle and you will have force exchange along the normal direction as well as there are component of forces along the tangential direction. So the assumption here importantly is the colliding vehicle or both vehicles are freely moving before and after the impact are freely moving before and after the impact. And another important point is the colliding vehicles surfaces are perfectly smooth and frictionless. Surfaces in contact are perfectly smooth and frictionless. Frictionless. So these are the two important assumptions that we make and we look at these two colliding vehicle A and colliding vehicle B. So let me now describe this uh, event by a reference axis. One is this axis, which is the normal axis, otherwise called line of impact. And this axis is representing the normal at the contact. So I call this as the N axis. And then you see, uh, I take an axis uh, perpendicular to this or uh, tangential to the contact surface. And that axis is what is this. We call this as a tangential axis or it is representing plane of impact. And the contacting surfaces are perfectly smooth and frictionless. So what would happen? There is an exchange of force that is only along the line of impact and they would have same magnitude in opposite direction. So they do get cancelled. So along the line of impact, you will have linear momentum conserved. So we will see that in a while. How does it go? <clears throat> now coming back to this particular impact called oblique central impact. So central impact is now shown in this picture because the center of mass of vehicle A and center of mass of vehicle B is lying along the line of impact. So now let us take the velocity of these two vehicle just before this collision are directed not along the line of impact that we have seen in direct central impact Rather, now it is along some at, at some angle to this. So this is angle theta A here, and this is angle theta B here. So this has got velocity VB, and this has got velocity VA before collision. Of course, the mass of this is 
uh, MA and MB. So after the collision, what would happen? We do not know the direction and the magnitude of velocity after that. So we would assume that uh, that would go in this direction. This dotted line uh, with the velocity V A dash and with the velocity say V B dash. And uh, these angles are now theta B dash and theta A dash. So you are going to take it like this. So this is the description of oblique central impact, right? So now what is that is happening? I my, my interest is to know unknowns are are velocities after collision. That is V A dash of vehicle A and V B dash, and the direction theta A dash and theta b dash so there are four unknowns here there are four unknowns here whereas we know before collision the velocity magnitude and direction theta a and velocity uh, of vehicle b magnitude and direction theta b those these are known and these four unknowns are unknown these four unknowns are present so how do you find these four unknowns we require four equations for that independent equations so how are you going to arrive at those uh, four equations? This is what I am going to now further explain. <coughs> so here, what are the impulses that are acting? So when these two uh, vehicles are colliding uh, like this uh, with the oblique direction, not head on head, but they come in two direction and they hit it like this, uh, then uh, we observe that uh, only impulses exerted onto the particle during the impact are due to the internal forces directed along the line of impact. That's what we observe. So let me just describe this again in detail. So what is it before collision, just before the contact or at the beginning of contact, what are the linear momentum of the system? So let me take this is vehicle A and this is vehicle B. A, B, and this is line of action, or N axis, and this one is T axis. So now, uh, the momentum, how am I going to write is, I would be able to write now that as two components. One is this, what is that, is M, A, V, A, and here, this is, M B V B and um, here V A <coughs> uh, component. So this is along N axis. So it is V A M A V A uh, cos theta A. So the cos theta A instead of putting it, I am just representing this with the subscript N. So along N and this also I am subscript putting along subscript n. So what is V A n? V A n is V A cos theta A. What is V B n? V B cos theta B. So I know the direction, so I know this. So these are the two uh, momentum uh, of individual colliding vehicle just at the beginning of the contact. And then you also have the other two components uh, uh, here that is one in this direction that is M A V A sine theta. I instead of that I put a subscript T. So along this component, and another one is here. M B V B T. So I just have resolved. These are the two velocities. I know the masses. So I just have put here. This is my uh, components of linear momentum along n axis and t axis right so now this plus this plus the impulse that are exchanged between that so since uh, the assumption that here it is uh, um, uh, two colliding vehicle with smooth uh, frictionless surfaces the force exchange is not an oblique direction like velocities and the exchange of force uh, or impulse is 
along the line of impact. So I would have that is represented like this. So plus I would have the representation of my impulses uh, uh, in this fashion. So the impulse from uh, A to B is F. So let's call that as minus F and that's all taking place in shortest duration and another impulse from B to A is F delta T. And you see that minus sign is that uh, they are in same magnitude opposite direction. So this impulse does get cancelled. So it is there here. So this is what is uh, equal to this two addition is what is equal to what am I doing is applying impulse and momentum principle. That's what I'm doing. So I'm writing particle linear momentum plus exchange of impulses that's equal to um, momentum after the collision. So at the end of the uh, collision, that is at the end of restitution period, the vehicle velocities are going to be something like this. So I would have now um, this A and B and I have now my N axis and T axis. The N axis and this T axis and the momentum after collision I uh, I consider that would be from here. Uh, uh, it, it should be resolved, right? So let me just take the resolved one. Just yeah. So I will have here this point mass and this point mass. So I would have uh, the velocity component here in this direction. That is m uh, a v a dash in the direction n <clears throat> and here i would have uh, m b sorry m b yeah and v b dash velocity comma along n and also i would have a component in this direction and this happens to be m a v a dash in t direction and m b v b dash in t direction so this is what is my application of linear impulse momentum principle on colliding vehicles. <laughs> so now you see here uh, the component along T axis of the uh, uh, component along T axis. Here you see before and after uh, collision, the momentum is conserved. Why is it? Because there are no impulse force. Impulse force like F delta T is there along the T axis. So you see here, uh, this is your n axis and this is your T axis. So along T axis, there is no external impulses. So the momentum before uh, collision and momentum after collision are conserved independently with respect to the individual vehicle. So that gives you two equations with respect to this. If you look at first vehicle, M A V A. T is what is equal to M A V A dash T. So whatever is there here. So this is along T axis. So along T axis, the momentum before collision is what is the momentum after collision for an individual vehicle. So here, since these two masses are there, so that goes off. So I have V A T is what is V A T dash. So the velocity before and velocity after collision along the plane of impact or along the tangential direction is same. So you can also say that the kinetic energy component in this direction is conserved. And uh, why is it? Because there is no impulses in this direction. If impulse is there, then that would also come here. Uh, that is not existing. Right, so uh, that is because of the consideration of smooth surface, frictionless surface. So uh, you have it like this. So we can go to a special condition, then you can also have external impulses in this direction. Then uh, this energy cannot be conserved, but you can develop the equation uh, necessary for solving the problem. So this is that uh, uh, equation number one. So similarly, equation number two is with respect to the second vehicle that is M B V B T is what is M B V B dash T. So this two masses goes off 
and I get VBT, whatever the velocity component along tangential direction before collision was there, that remains same after collision as well. So this is my second equation. So I have now two equations. Now the other two equations I would get by applying uh, along the line of impact, uh, my uh, two equation, one is along the line of impact, correct? So along n axis. When I look at the linear momentum along this axis as conserved. So what is that I'll have here? So the linear momentum uh, M A V A N plus M V V B N. That should be equal to M A V A dash N plus M V V B dash N. So this is my third equation. <coughs> so this M V A dash component in comp along in direction component like this you understand this so i get third equation so i require one more equation to get that one more equation is what is obtained with the similar analogy that we looked at in the morning class direct central impact so what does that you do one is um, linear momentum is conserved why linear momentum is conserved these two impulsive forces f delta t by b to uh, on A or by A on to B are cancels each other. So when they cancel each other, this equation is uh, obtained. But uh, uh, you can also get to your fourth equation now, considering an individual vehicle. So when I consider an individual vehicle, I would have now uh, along the uh, line of impact equation, M A V A dash, sorry, V A along, in direction that is this <coughs> plus uh, the uh, uh, what is that uh, plus the impulsive force so impulsive force here is what with respect to a when i look at that is this so i have here instead of this sign minus sign so this i will have here minus f delta t because this one I, I take and that's equal to uh, this uh, minus m a v a dash n so i get this equation this is equation number four a Uh, it's not that so this is not a, it's equal to this one minute so what did we do in the morning uh, if we are doing it it is with the common velocity i i'm looking at now only one and uh, this equation i write from beginning till end of uh, maximum deformation that is uh, first phase period of deformation so at that time this and the other one is the same force in restitution period also up uh, there so it would be m a v a in n direction uh, instead of va i can write this as u common velocity u common velocity whatever we did in the morning class same way and then uh, the re remaining restitution period has become m a v uh, not v u in n direction minus f delta t that's equal to m a v a dash in n direction this is 4b so from 4a and 4b i am able to write uh, the definition of uh, this impulse so this one uh, here is what is uh, um, uh, deformation impulse uh, this one is what is restitution impulse so this by this ratio would give you uh, your uh, e uh, coefficient of restitution so you could define that e similarly you can have 4c 4d equation with respect to vehicle b and you would have that and uh, we would uh, able to arrive at the definition of uh, coefficient of restitution by the relative velocity before and after knowing the relative velocity of separation that is after collision that is vb dash in n minus va dash n uh, by 
by V A N minus V B N. So you get this equation. So this equation would be so you'll have similarly 4 C and 4 D. So here you have common velocity uh, there. And in this equation also you'll have common velocity that would be removed. Uh, and then you have uh, the expression of E is given by ratio of relative velocity along the line of impact uh, after collision, that is velocity of separation and um, divided by <coughs> relative velocity before collision, that is velocity of approach. So this equation is equation five. So equation one, equation two, equation three, and equation five <coughs> are the sufficient four equations to find out the four unknowns. So this is how you are able to solve. <coughs> Sorry. So do you have any doubts at this point? Do you have any doubts at this point? Hmm. Any doubts? <coughs> <coughs> so you can solve <coughs> you can solve many number of problems <coughs> based on <coughs> application of these uh, principles uh, <coughs> we can have many special cases many special cases in the sense <coughs> you can have <coughs> impact on an unconstrained uh, body so two colliding uh, we had here an assumption that <coughs> both the vehicles are free freely moving before and after impact so that can be now uh, changed as one body is constrained and other body is hitting and then uh, the equations can be modified a bit. What is that you would see is you would have an additional uh, impulses that are there other than which are mutually cancelling in internal impulses, <coughs> impulsive forces. So you have such combination problems to solve. I just to stop at <coughs> this point of time, the lecture, and we'll meet again on Wednesday, right? If you do not have any doubts. If you have doubts, I'm happy to uh, answer your doubts. Otherwise, I will end the lecture now and we'll meet again on uh, Wednesday morning. And uh, whatever now I have taught you with respect to this theory uh, is what you can see in your textbook. You look at your textbook uh, uh, in the seventh chapter, you have uh, a Kelvin's model, uh, uh, analytical model. So basically what we have discussed. <laughs> so we'll see that in detail uh, what way um, you are going to quantify the energy loss during the collision and so on in the upcoming class. Right. So I'll stop at this point, uh, this lecturing, and we'll meet again in the next class. <laughs>